In the 21st century, we're fighting a war over control of information. Hackers are the resistance. I'm Tor Eklund, and I represent hackers at Federal Criminal Court. Tor Eklund is a New York-based defense attorney who heads his own law firm, a firm with the nationally recognized computer law, intellectual property, and criminal defense practice. One of Eklund's most prominent cases involves hacktivist Laurie Love, and it is covered in the new documentary, Trust Machine, directed by award-winning filmmaker Alex Winter. Why'd I take it? Because I thought it was right. I wanted to defend him because I thought that that type of political protest is important. Larry Love was an international fugitive and British hacker accused of taking part in Operation Last Resort, which ultimately replaced the front page of the U.S. Sentencing Guidelines website with the game of asteroids. For this offense, along with allegedly stealing large amounts of U.S. data, American authorities wanted Love to stand trial in the U.S. for cyber hacking, where, if found guilty, he faced up to 99 years of imprisonment and $9 million in fines. He was engaged, allegedly, in a political protest against the prosecution that led to the suicide of Aaron Swartz, one of our computer innovators. Swartz was accused of downloading over 4 million documents from a database of academic journals that had been frequently criticized for its high access fees. Rather than chance the 35 years in jail and the $1 million fine he faced to proven guilty, he committed suicide. I thought that the Aaron Swartz prosecution was draconian, was misguided, and it led to a young man's death. Fundamentally, if our system is such that it's supposed to be much harder to get a criminal conviction because your liberty's at stake, we need to ask ourselves why we have a computer crime statute that is actually easier to get criminal convictions in than civil convictions in, because it's happening. Enacted in 1984, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, a cybersecurity bill, was written as an amendment to the computer fraud law. It was first used in 1989, three years after its creation, to sentence a Cornell graduate to three years probation for creating the Morris Worm, a virus that would make a computer dysfunctional. The Computer Fraud and Abuse Act prohibits two things primarily, unauthorized access to a computer or unauthorized damage to a computer. The problem with the CFAA and why it's been called the worst law in technology is because it doesn't define what unauthorized access is. What's happened is the CFAA now is, it's too easy of a tool to bring multiple felony convictions with like heavy, heavy sentences and fines against innocent people or people sort of doing routine information security for teenagers doing hackers. Then you get juries and judges that don't know anything about computers and prosecutors have an incentive to get a hacking conviction because hacking convictions are sexy. And it's a, just a recipe for, for disaster. Some things need to be punished. I'm not saying we don't need a computer crime statute. I'm saying this one's horribly written. And what we need to do with this law is we need to circumscribe, radically reduce the criminal liability under this law. It's, I think, actually hurting the computer economy because it's chilling information security researchers from doing important work. The CFAA was a major player in the prosecution of Lori Love, and the full story of Eklund's defense is presented and available in the documentary Trust Machine.